Good morning, everybody. Uh, last sentence I agree with reading here. This is the Augsburg Bridge and Port Authority Board meeting. It's uh, Wednesday, July 6. It's uh, 8.35 a.m. and I'd like to call that meeting to order. Uh, I'd like to start this meeting by with some introductions and thoughts in the process and things that we've accomplished here and things that have come and gone and whatever. In my term as a chairperson, uh, uh, I saw four great board members leave and part of the process, Mr. Carter, um, Mr. Hooper, uh, Mona Breen, and uh, Steve Barlow. And, and so uh, as we transition from some of the great things we did in the last three years, and we've made some great changes here, uh, new board members come on and the process continues and the uh, thoughts and processes from the people in the past are long gone and new people, new thoughts and feelings come forward and, and I welcome these new board members with that thought and process. So it's so nice to have new, new, new thinkers, new, new energy, new excitement uh, and also to protect some of the great things that we, in our mission that we've accomplished and so those board members can understand that uh, there's a lot to go on and a lot of things that we need to adhere to and a lot of things that we need to energize and prepare ourselves for the future. So uh, I, I'd like to uh, let them introduce themselves. Uh, I see a board member, it's probably Deja Vu, who was here many years before we were and uh, um, a loyal public servant for many, many years in a lot of different capacities. Uh, Sam Burns, why don't you introduce yourself and say what your thoughts are <coughs> here this morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that's true, I've been here before, 1980 through uh, 89. Uh, quite different today than it was back then. Uh, we were just building, uh, building shell buildings in the industrial park at the time. And uh, <coughs> unfortunately, for a lot of years, we never had a woman on the board. So it was, the, mid, it was the mid 80s, so that's, that's great to have at least two of them. Um, you know, it has changed a lot. Mr. Chairman, you and other members have certainly done a lot. Uh, and Mr. Hooper, and he was on the board. He contributed to that. Uh, that's good. And uh, I always view the Bridge and Port Authority as one of the uh, major economic developers in our region. And I'm sure that will continue. Thank you. Lynn? Uh, my name is Lynn Fountain. Nice to meet you all. Great to be here. Um, I'm an attorney practicing with Peace and Justice in. I was originally from the North Country and left for about 28 years, just came back five years ago. So it was a, a little bit of an adjustment when I first came back. I had been in some pretty big urban areas for a while. Um, but it's great to be back here and I'm thrilled to be a part of this because I think we there's a lot of potential up here, I believe. And it's great to see an organization like this that really seems to be making things happen. Um, I'd like to see the same happen in the Sina, but or at least across the region, the River Valley region. Um, but it, I think this is marvelous, and thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm Captain Reagan. I've been a board member, I think, for four years, maybe. Um, yeah, it's nice to have, anytime you make changes, it's, you know, it's, it's good to get new ideas. Um, our past board members were unbelievably good, so, um, including Don sitting here. So, I mean, the bar's been set pretty high. Um, I feel collectively the staff and the board uh, do a really good job of working together, bouncing ideas off each other, um, helping each other, um, and uh, we do have, and it's, it's great to have more people. <laughs> um, <coughs> uh, previously, um, if somebody wasn't here, we couldn't have a meeting. So, um, and luckily we were able to coordinate all our schedules. Um, it is a huge commitment. So. Um, of any board that I've ever been on, it's probably the biggest commitment because um, we have just so many things going on right now from the from the bridge to the airport to the port. There's just so many things going on that uh, it's, a, it's a really big commitment. So um, I know Sam knows that and I, I know the people that are <coughs> board members aren't afraid to work. So it'll be great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The law it's like welcome new board members here. Uh, as Gavin said, we did need the you know, full board here. and. Uh, and as Daco with Sam said, uh, fresh ideas will help help us move along in a positive direction. And uh, we have a great staff here that works really hard, and uh, we give them all the support we can. And uh, 
as I said, uh, we've got a lot of things going on, a lot of important decisions to make in the future here, and uh, we're just glad to have you on board. Well, that being said, uh, you know, with board members, we have committees, and the committees are the driving force behind the scenes of the board meetings here, and what committees and type of things, whatever, it gives direction, focus, whatever, so new board members, you'll uh, we'll meet later on to focus on what committees serve serve the board best, <coughs> the talents and things that you want to do in the time frame you have, and we'll do that, we'll do that just a little bit later. So all that, that being said, uh, I'm officially calling me in the order. Do uh, you have any letters of communication to the board? Uh, there are some, uh, specifically in the, uh, the board read file there. When you open it, you'll see some thank you notes to Mr. Morrow for a presentation. Uh, he recently did over to uh, Governor. Several thank you notes from the class there. You'll see an interesting uh, white paper from Mr. Harry Valentine. Uh, June 2016 has some references to the Port of Ogdensburg and our unique position uh, from a Canadian perspective. So that was that was uh, kind of interesting there as well. You'll also see news articles relating to our bridge debt, um, increase in cargo for uh, prior year, railroad awards, uh, both railroads awards, uh, regional council supporting our our work, uh, the announcement of the Allegiance lights. <coughs> And uh, also, we went in a different direction with our Fast Lane and Tiger program application, and we're seeking $5 million on an $8 million project to paint the bridge and do some uh, structural work there and remove some lead based paint on the bridge in the process. And of course, um, the four uh, new board members joining the OBP board, obviously welcome. Uh, new Route 68 opening. The bypass opening, uh, Canadian commentary on the uh, airport being a driver, some additional news articles and comments, a reference to our new airport manager as well. So a variety of different things this past month. That concludes the uh, okay, thank you for that. letters and communication. Uh, there's no board minutes for approval, so we'll move on to um, any comments, presentations from the <coughs> citizens here? Mr. Chairman, at this time I recommend that we take item D1 out of order uh, and have a presentation by Mr. Brian Hurley from one group. This is regarding the approval of bridge property damage insurance. Uh, specifically, as you can see on, on the screen and also on item D1, uh, we're recommending that option one be pursued at a total cost in the first year of $111,194 and the second year cost uh, would be the same. To explain that further, <laughs> we're naming up. And here it is. is. <laughs> and here it is. Wow. <laughs> Time is everything. Sorry, Brian, right. didn't realize you weren't here. <laughs> Brian, uh, uh, we're on camera and we're all set for the presentation. If you'd like to, uh, I'd love to thank you. use the podium there, you're more than welcome. Thank you for the opportunity to get in front of the board and the new board members. It's always great to get up and talk to our friends up here. Um, as Wade said, we uh, have a couple of options, and I know there are some that are on the um, handout. And Wade, I don't know, do you have a copy of that that I can look at? Um, just as a little bit of a background, we were engaged with the group since 2011. And there were some challenges with the insurance uh, from, a, from a protection level. And we, together with your team up here, were able to work out a pretty favorable scenario for coverage and to eliminate some co-insurance type uh, potential penalties and clauses. Um, but that said, from an overview, what we look forward to do is give you the best affordable coverage you can have based on, especially in a bridge scenario, probable maximum loss. PML is the term that you hear in this industry when we're talking about structures like this. So we try to find out what's the value of the bridge, how much does it cost to replace it. Um, we were actually able to get one of the best underwriters in the country up here, Mike Giambra, recently. Spent some time with Wade and the folks up here. And you've got a number of different types of structures within this bridge. So 
we were able to sort of recreate the coverage, again, geared towards probable prob prob maximum loss, PML, and keep the budget, <coughs> the numbers where we can because of the budgetary constraints that I think we, that we have. So um, we, we've got this year is the expiring was 115 million 988. That was based on. Uh, Ryan, that's thousand. That's thousand. 115,000. What did I say? Million. million. Didn't I get you that number? Two kids waiting. I apologize. I'm going to recover that one. <laughs> Red almost had to go back in the hospital. You know, you've only been back for a little while, Fred. Right? Um, so what we did was, through the uh, ability of the engineer to come up and take a look at this, we have given a new value, a new um, probable maximum loss. Your values are still high, but the way we get there is a little better. So if you see for the proposal, the 111,194, um, is actually based on a higher PML than it was last last time. Um, we do a two-year contract, which we've been able to work out, which is very beneficial to the authority. We lock in a price, and again, anything based, any large property is based on replacement cost. And as we know, materials and labor these days are skyrocketing. So the good part is it doesn't lock you in. If something better comes up next year, you can certainly opt for that but it gives us the ability to lock in at a favorable rate for two years. Um, the one thing we talk about is deductibles, and I know we've talked about this over the years. The current plan, and it has been for a number of years, is based on a $10 million deductible. And folks say, well, that's a pretty big number to have to carry ourselves. The, the challenge is to get the premium within the budget and, and have a coverage that you need and have a deductible that we can do something with. In today's market of relatively cheap money, the thought is in an organization like yours is we don't have $10 million, we could secure $10 million of funding somewhere. And that leads to the question, well, what would a $5 million deductible be? What do other organizations do? Uh, New York State Thruway Authority carries $5 million deductible. Other bridges and other authorities carry 10, 15, 20 million. It just depends on what your appetite for risk is and what your budget is. Um, so just as an example, and we talked about throwing these out there, uh, if you went everything the same, but it looked at a $5 million deductible, it goes up about 25% in premium. So you go from 111000 to 139000 And I just give you that for information so that if you ever had a situation where you wanted to evaluate. And the, the ability to work with the folks that we have at Ace and Chubb over the years is they're not looking for more premium. We're looking for the best type of coverage we can get. And Mike has made that abundantly clear over the years of where do we need to be, how can we structure this so it fits for what the authority <coughs> needs and covers you in your worst case scenario. Um, you also have the other component of that is business income. Should there be a loss to the bridge and it shuts down, you're not going to be able to collect tolls, so you have business income. Typically we looked at a one year term, POI, period of indemnification. So the options you see in front of you carry that out a little bit more. What would it be for a two-year period of indemnification? What would it be a three-year? How long is the bridge going to be down until we fix it? So again, any options, there's no right or wrong, it's just what we want to look at. Um, and it doesn't, you would think, well, geez, it's not going up too much relative to that. Your, P, your business income is a smaller percentage than your property damage. So the majority of your premium is going to go to fix the bridge. You're going to get your business income, but percentage-wise, it's not as much. So that's why the premium doesn't jump up considerably when you do that. Um, and then the other options, sorry, I'm bouncing around from page to page. Um, we talked about over the years are the named perils, the, the named wind peril, earthquake, flood, and terrorism. Uh, those are all additional options. And the discussion we had with Mike, as well as what we've had over the years, is What's our appetite for that? Do we think the North Country is in an earthquake zone? Yeah. Is there going to be a flood that causes damage to the bridge? And as Mike said, he's known as the bridge guy in the industry, he said if there's a flood that damages the bridge, we're in a lot more trouble than a million dollar you So again, it comes down to probable. What's the probability of that happening? Those options are there. At one point, we opted for earthquake coverage. 
we don't have that now. Again, it's just a business decision. I, what I like to do for your folks, especially on, on board members, you want to evaluate the option so that, God forbid, anything does happen, the, the community might say, well, geez, did you ever look at that? Yes, we evaluated it. We didn't think that it was a prudent business decision, whatever it was. And we go on from there. Um, I know I'm going through this. I want to help you guys get a little bit of an understanding on it. It's a continuation of what we have, but if there's any questions, new members or anybody that's been through this presentation before. Well, you know, Brian, one of the things that you know we talked about when we got into this process, well, at least when I got into the process, was we just had a one-year policy. And then we realized the you know, underwriters gave us a two-year policy, and that gave us a little better quote, better clean, whatever. And I think maybe the last time I, I asked her, we didn't ask her, maybe it was in my head, I didn't say it, but is there a three-year policy out there that even cut us shorter, make us uh, consistency when we're you know, in our policy? Is that available? There are in the insurance industry, Sam, there are three years and sometimes even longer. The, the issue with this risk is the components that you're going to need to rebuild the bridge and the increases in those. They don't feel confident in extending past two years. Um, even even with housing, I mean, you look at what a sheet of plywood costs these days versus what it cost a year ago. Um, so they they a little hesitant to extend any further than two years. We did talk about that again okay. this year, okay. but to your point, they are available in the insurance industry, and we do them, but not typically on a risk that has this much property damage exposure. Sam and Lynn, what, what we did before, we didn't have earthquake coverage. And then we put it on, we start thinking about, you know, here in epicenter, it's just close by and things like that. And all of a sudden they said, well, wait a minute. What well, was if we had earthquake coverage, we didn't have it before, and the rationale was being is if we had such uh, huge structural damage, the, the state and the federal government would come in and say, okay, why would you have this? Because they're going to come in and take care of it. The reverse side is if you have coverage for 5 to $10 million of structural damage, whatever, I forget what the example is on that, but... I mean, so that would make it, you know, that's that's when we opted out again. So we've been in and out with this, whatever, so it's the will of what you think, and as a board, that we're willing to risk and understand the options of with it or without it. And so uh, sometimes we, I, I, that number is a little high from the last time. Remember, I think it was like 12,000, 15,000, now it's up to 20. And so that tells you exactly what, what's happening here, that costs are going up. Right. Costs are going up. So... That's what, whatever you think or what you feel is, you know, as a board, you say, oh, do you want to spend the twenty thousand dollars for what you get out of it? Um, of course, we all said our prayers afterwards. You know, when we didn't have it, <laughs> that nothing did happen. Right. So, for twenty thousand dollars, what does twenty thousand dollars mean for the risk of what twenty thousand dollars gets you? And so, that's where we're at. Can we afford the extra twenty thousand? That's what, we're, that's what we have to think about here. That's really what it comes down to because we're recommending uh, definitely an option one at 111.194, and then whatever additional options that the board feels prudent, whether it be uh, flood, earth movement, name, windstorm, or terrorism. Um, we're not recommend, recommending those at this time, but in some cases we have put on uh, earth, uh, earth movement in the past. In some cases we have. So we followed past procedure and brought that up as an option. So. Do we have the option to add that in the future? Say after year one, we decide, or six months, eight months, we decide we want to add the earthquake or the terrorism. Can we do that? Yes, because it's a, typically it's an event that happens in the future. It's not something that you're going to notice. Um, there will be a what's called a no-known loss letter. They'll say, you don't know of anything that happened in the past that might be a claim. The only thing with flood is you, you can't do it while the flood works. <laughs> you have to give them a little more, more notice than that. <laughs> yeah, well, it doesn't mean a flood I mean, to me, it's it kind of ludicrous the way to think about it. Well, wait a minute. I mean, what would flood damage be for a bridge? That's would it be fast moving water that would. Probably on the approaches more so, because maybe some erosion where the approaches are okay. stationed. Um, but that's why, again, when we had Mike up here and we said, Mike, what do you think on these other options? And he said, if, if I'm looking to cover what I really need to cover the most, and looking at my probable maximum loss, he said, flood is, is way low on my priority list. This is him speaking. He 
because of where we are, and to your point, what's the flood going to do? Terrorism, I mean, we had three terrorism acts, building, building, building. They, they want to kill people, unfortunately. They don't want to disrupt traffic. So we don't think that that's high on the list. Named windstorm, we look at the structure that you've got, and the engineers have looked at it. Now, there have certainly been some bridges, famous bridges that were affected by wind, but with your structure and where we are, everything is rated on location. We don't see that as a high uh, loss. Some of us on the earthquake side, as Wade mentioned, we've gone back and forth. So there's an option. There's no right or wrong, but in insurance, it's always it's termed self-insurance. What do I want to self-insure? If I don't have a loan on my car, I don't typically need collision coverage. I'm going to self-insure that. But if I if I don't feel comfortable with that, I'll get collision. Ryan, does the premium go up though if you j jump in in the middle of a year? Or? It, it'll be prorated, so you're going to get, it's always based on the policy term. So let's say we jump in in December, you'll, you know, seven months, five months that we've used up, and we'll have seven months of premium prorated. So it is uh, typically that, and you can do that, again, if it's something that hasn't happened. You know, we don't know of an earthquake, but we make a decision, okay, we feel that that's a prudent move, we want to have earthquake coverage, we can do that. Is there a liability involved in this, in this policy? I mean, is there ice on the bridge, the truck slides off, is it in the water, something happens, whatever? You, the, you have a general liability policy covering the authority. This is specifically a Just, okay. physical damage policy. Okay, because I want to clear that. I'm yeah, to clear. there's other policies in place for that. Okay. The, the only component outside of physical damage is the uh, associated loss of income. Well, I was thinking if there's structural failure or something happens, that's another policy, another procedure, or whatever. No, anything structural. So, well, wait a minute. Yeah. If we, if we have a design flaw or something happens. I mean, we have a bridge, whatever. Something lets go. I'll just do something crazy. Like the Minneapolis situation, okay? Something structurally happened, point, whatever. We're covered for that? The physical damage to the bridge would be covered by this. Your liability if a piece fell okay. off the bridge and hit a boat, that's your general liability. Different, okay. different policy. Correct. Different policy, okay. Yeah. A ship hits the pier. There was physical damage to the pier. If right. it's not your ship, if it's my ship hitting your bridge, this policy covers damage to the bridge. Okay. So apologies if I missed this, but what does the earthquake coverage, what's our coverage? Your coverage is if there is an earthquake, an earth movement they call it these days, and we footings are loosened or they're, God forbid, a, pe a piece falls. Whatever damage to the bridge above the deductible that, that is incurred is covered. Cover up the yeah. And again, I'm glad we, we brought it to this point. It's physical damage to the bridge. So there's different policies for different things, but this is strictly your PD, your physical damage. And right. business is, is there anything that we can do? I mean, our new board members, we have a Clarkson study, and they've done robotics and things that have bought this bridge. They, get, they have it piece by piece, okay, on the computer, and each piece is whatever, okay, is on there, whatever. So they're part of My question is, is there anything that we can do to lower our cost, okay, in this type of policy? We have the last safety inspection report, and I think you're due for another one this summer. Every two, two years. years. Yes. So they take that into consideration. They, we had the conversation of the Clarkson scenario with the drone and the new sonar testing that you're doing. So all those play into what condition is the bridge in and what level of maintenance is being done. So to your point, it does. Okay. <coughs> Sam, didn't we, in, uh, in regards to that study, didn't we have Clarkson give us an estimate of, in an earthquake, what, you know, the probability or what, you know, level of an earthquake we, the bridge would have to sustain. Yeah, they did have that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm just thinking, hey, we have a small tremor, which we've had around here. If we want to do an inspection and say, hey, geez, we're concerned about it, we're going to be paying for it anyways because our deductible is going to, whatever we do is our deductible. So it's not like that's going to be covered. The only thing is going to be, because we're going to have to pay it out of our deductible first. We want to see, hey, is the bridge still structurally sound? Anything... <laughs> Below the five million, we'd have to take care of it. I'm assuming. Even ten, if we had ten, ten, yeah, ten, right. ten, ten million. Yeah. So, I mean, I would. I my my recommendation was it would be not go with it. We had this discussion last time around, not go with it. 
but just for our peace of mind, let's take a le ask parts of what the level the bridge would have, you know, or what kind of an earthquake the bridge would have to sustain to have damage above the, the 10 million point. And if it's something we need to add the coverage, we add the coverage and prorate our premium. That's a great question. We'll add it uh, to the list for when we have Clarkson in here doing the update on the project. Okay. Because, I mean, it's a $20,000 hit. Mm -hmm. So It's amazing because the epicenter is so far away and right. where they are in the Richter scale, what the number is, create certain damages and, you know, how far you're away. So, yeah, they have, we have that was our back in the 1880s, 1890s here, and I've had a bad one here. All right, anything else uh, for, for Brian? Well, I just want you to know, this is how most insurance proposals end. Everyone just will be stares on their faces. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to it. <laughs> but I appreciate the time to get in front of you of all, as always. Um, as, as Wade was able to come down and see our new facility in Syracuse, we have a lot of resources within our company now. We're, we're known as one group. <clears throat> Excuse me, and this is just for your ed edification. You have human resources, resource, uh, human resources folks, environmental, engineering, uh, HR, anything that you have needs for, you have access to. So I know you're really doing a lot with a with a small team up here, and I always tell these guys, I think of the Ed Sullivan show with the guy spinning the plates. So you do have resources and a team that you have access to if you ever need. Thank you. Well, th thank you because what people don't realize is not everybody is jumping out, jumping out over here, running in here to, to ensure this bridge. And so, I want to thank you and your organization for stepping up in the last you know, years, or whatever, to support us because that's a big part of all of this. That you don't have to run all over the place and get spikes in insurance rates and things like that. So we've been pretty consistent along the way. So I appreciate it. Well, if Mr. Morrow beats me with that fishing rod to keep the premium down. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you sir. Thank you very much, Fred. Fred, good seeing you back, buddy. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Chairman, at this time, I recommend that uh, we take this item out of order. Sure. Yes, we can. Fred, you're, you're very happy with the quote, uh, very yes. comfortable with it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I'll move that. Second. Okay. We have a second. Questions, comments? I, I just think for a, I, just a question I raised, I just think for everybody's peace of mind, because um, we batted this back and forth last year, too, I mean, two years ago regarding the earthquake yeah. insurance. Just for everybody's peace of mind, Let's see if we can get that answer away from Clarkson. Give us a. I always like to make a decision based on you know, and an educated decision, not a guesstimate. So I think we should do that. And if, we, and if we feel after their discussions that they come back and say, "Hey, you guys are crazy not to have you know earthquake," then we add it. Yeah, yeah we've gone back and forth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, when I thought about it, I said, "Why, why would you for twenty thousand dollars would you risk? And, and you know, replacement value is." Who knows what that number, half a billion, or, or maybe, or you may never have it again. You know, so it's, it's, it's a crucial, crucial part of this organization, that bridge. It is, it is a thoroughfare of everything. Um, just, I was going to say, just to be clear, what we're voting on, this is a two-year um, agreement, 111194 the first year, same amount the second year. So this is a two-year policy. Doesn't sound like a good deal. But it is a good deal. <laughs> it's something. And you don't realize that you have to insure this bridge for, for this amount of money, and you say, what do I get for it? Well, obviously, peace of mind. You're paying for peace of mind. Uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Mr. Lamache? Yes. Mr. Loeffler? Yes. Mr. Reckon? Yes. Ms. Fountain? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. There, there's your first official vote. <laughs> <laughs> and ironically, it may be the cheapest thing on the agenda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he isn't kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. So, airport activity report? Yeah. Um, as you can see, the uh, 
commuter passengers, the airplane air, airline passengers were down significantly in June, and that was because we shut the airport down and we didn't have the last four days. And I imagine uh, people planned on that prior to that shutdown so that their car would be parked there and, and all of those kind of things. So we were off significantly uh, against the first two months, which were off. Um, so I think that's to be expected. We will not have any in July, and we'll only have passengers for a few days the last of August. Uh, I did not get the fuel sales for June yet, uh, so uh, that's not reported. That's okay. okay. Take your time on that. Uh, we had an issue with the fuel farm yesterday. Just to advise everybody, the fuel farm for Jet A was shut down immediately due to a safety issue that came up yesterday. It will be down for the foreseeable future and require a pump replacement, which is probably somewhere in the fifty to one hundred and twenty thousand dollar range. So, more information to come. This is a new item that uh, just came about yesterday. As a result, we'll have no. Uh, Jet A fuel sales through the arrival of the new truck, which is scheduled for July 15th. So when this, the new trucks come, we'll be loading them and that, that'll be available for, for uh, Jet A sales? Yes, we'll be able to fuel directly out of the trucks. And with Allegiant coming in and stuff, we'll be able to coordinate that with the amount of fuel in each truck and we who's need, responsible for it. We need to find a temporary solution to get the fuel out of the tank and into the truck. Okay. Into a truck. That's so probably, my guess without trying to solve the problem in the abstract, my guess is probably a temporary uh, pump on a skid that might work. Um, but again, we're limited by several factors out there, including the electrical. Um, that will determine the maximum size of the pump that we can use. <coughs> um, everything's all highly specialized, highly custom. Out there, we're going to be <coughs> under a very tight timeline to get that back in place. But I did want to bring that up regarding the fuel tank because that will impact our fuel sales uh, for the uh, upcoming month. Okay. Thank you. Well, what's, what's really, you know, I, I thought about this process for a long time and thinking about the essential air service and what that does, and and all of a sudden you add the low-cost carrier in. I'd be very interested to see what the marking approach and how people all of a sudden become a, a little more aware of this little aircraft that come here, they're going to Florida, all of a sudden they realize that Cape Air is here, even though it's not a premium air service in regards to you're sitting in a... Uh, uh, you know, jet aircraft, but it's a very quality service into Albany and Boston. And so, be interested to see what these numbers slide up where they want to be. Uh, um, we're fortunate that uh, we have them. We'll just see where we go from there. So, the numbers are are what they are. Um, any other comments to, to Fred? On that? I guess I comment, but wait. Do we know what happened? Why did this a discovery yesterday? This was a discovery yesterday. Um, short answer, I'd be happy to discuss it off camera with you because there are some safety sure. related issues okay. that required it to be shut down and shut down immediately. Okay, thanks. Fred? Uh, the credit card report, just for the new board members. Uh, a couple of years ago, we decided to start accepting credit cards at the toll booth. And uh, there was some fear and trepidation, especially on my part, because $2.75 collected on the credit card can cause us, you know, create a significant percentage fee. Uh, so we, uh, we, we bid out the, the service and uh, found the one that had lower per transaction charges uh, with the same percentages uh, as, as the others, and we went with them. And I expected that these fees would be somewhere between five and seven percent, but we've but we've found that people use their card more to <coughs> renew their cards rather than pay two dollars and seventy five cents. So it's been uh, kind of a, a, a pleasant surprise that it was lower than expected, uh, and the growth you can see the growth uh, down through it was a, about twelve thousand uh, dollars in June after thirteen thousand in May, but uh, and the fees. Again, uh, continue to be uh, acceptable, surprisingly good. So, but so a 3.89 is reasonable. Yes, yes, that's a 3.89. Yes, that is 
Samantha said that's unbelievable. <laughs> that's right. unbelievable. You should exp you should tell the new board members one, one of the uh, driving forces behind this was the amount of paperwork, the number of people that show up with no money, right? And we couldn't accept credit cards, so well, we were we building them. We we're sending them bills. We we're spending office time and trying to collect, you know, two dollars, and it's costing more to post it. So the hour wise, I don't know how that figures in, but we saved a lot of man hours, lady hours. Because somebody had to track it all the time. And, and we ended up writing a lot of those off. So we'd send them a bill and we'd send them a follow up. And with Canadian postage, a lot of them Canadian, uh, that costs us more than the $2.75 along with the effort. And then writing it off anyway, I think we're writing off uh, around 60% of them. So uh, now we get it. We have a reasonable fee. And, uh, I, and I think it's been very successful. We even collect a few of our rents uh, by credit card. That's also increased the, uh, uh, or, or decreased the percentage fee. And last but not least, I had these passed out. This is the bridge uh, traffic report. This is fresh off the presses. Uh, uh, I just did, did this report this morning. The uh, cars for, for June were down almost 10% truck up a little bit, uh, and so for the year, uh, for the month and the year, 8.5% down. So it continues to be weak, Canadian dollar continues to be weak, and I think that's the driving force there. Um, and I think that is shown in the truck traffic because truck traffic is less affected by the Canadian dollar than the others. But what we did is we went to McClellan Group, and they are advertisers in Canada, and so we reached out. You know, the Thousand Island Bridge has a tremendous amount of traffic there. We were trying to take business from them, but the idea was why not use this uh, this bridge here for whatever reason, the wait time and all those type of things. So uh, we invested in that that procedure uh, a year and a half, two years ago. And so this is what you got. We have at least our, our truck traffic is stabilized, whatever. I mean, they can decide whatever. The commercial, the people who want to travel over, it's because of the probably exchange rate of the dollar isn't uh, you know, conducive to people to come back and to come back and forth like they used to. So that's why the numbers are down. The numbers are down. Well, an awful jump there from in our trucks from uh, May to June or an awful drop off. Uh, the, the drop off in the percentage, but if you look at the actual number, uh, yeah. June and May were about the same. It was last June that was a jump up. Yeah. And so I think it's. Uh, more consistent, really, this year. I mean, it looks like a big drop uh, when you first look at it. I think it was just about the same as May. Probably would be the same per day in May and June as it was in May. I kind of thought that the car traffic might be up because every time you go by Little Italy, all you see is Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Probably be that way through Friday too with the Mega Millions ride. There you go. <laughs> right. Chad. Saying Maxim is you know, shipping a lot of product across the bridge, okay. so that's probably reflected in the main number. Okay. And then you had, of course, you had the fertilizer going across too, and mm -hmm. that was probably mostly that right. yeah, big increase in the main number as well. Is our, is our, refresh my memory, is our contract up with my phone? Yeah, we're all done. We're with all done with that. Okay. John. We're still using what they've put together in terms of you know, the website yep. still there, but the advertising and, and that is not okay. So. In terms of the uh, truck traffic, uh, do we know where this where they're either coming from or going to? The major we don't have data at the booth. Um, mm -hmm. Sam, we've had that question before, and we tried to get that information, but the truckers feel it's proprietary where they're going. And uh, the only way we can get it is if they gave it to us. So we can only guess, uh, you know, because we know that the uh, trip is going to Right. You know, but other than it's really hard to know. And again, they, they feel that information is theirs to, and they got it. It would be good to know. Yes, it would. In, in yes, terms of southbound traffic, we theorize the majority of it comes from Montreal. Ships are unloaded, they go in containers, right. but it's rail or vessel. You get the Ottawa traffic, not as much going east. We don't really have a destination. 
in terms of northbound, you've got Max who's a big user, Echo's a big user since they consolidated mm -hmm. here. And uh, in Guardian Glass downstate, they use the bridge quite a bit. So the larger players. Fred, at the next uh, board meeting, I'd like a special section broken out on the bridge in terms of who our, who our key customers are. I mean, it's, it's not secret information by any means, but. Uh, um, well, you know Robert's one of them. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> they're they're all the major, major customers. Can we get that out of our new trip, new uh, <coughs> system? Yeah. Thank you. John? Any report? Uh, building occupancy report. Um, we own seven buildings in Commerce Park. Uh, about 170,000 square feet. 76% of that are 30,000 roughly is at least, and we're looking at getting contracts for the other. Mostly building 11 has uh, space available. That's one of our nicest buildings, and building one, which is, one is our oldest building. Um, that's kind of a tricky one to run, we're working on our contracts with that. This building, we have about 10, any, anywhere from small offices to suites. Uh, <coughs> two of those are not running. back and forth so we as far as efficiency of time and effort whatever it's okay they give the highlights whatever they wish to do here or whatever but each person has their own report if you want to ask them like John Morrison is now marketing at the airport and John is to uh, you know the industrial park and other type of things that he does and so you know, it's, that's what we've kind of done and, but they will they will Available at any time you want to ask some questions by email or anything you wish to do, go ahead. I mean, just uh, that, that window is there for you to open, so don't be afraid to ask any questions, whatever. I know you're, at, you're, you're, you're trying to learn as fast as you can. It takes a while. There's a, there's a lot going on, so don't think that, uh, you know, be, don't be afraid to ask any question you think that it's in your mind. So, so just to add to that, uh, what happens uh, generally about a week before a board meeting, to shoot for we get a report out that has all our period reports and there might be um, I'll give an example for mine um, bullet item associated with the um, port dredging project and there'll be 
you know, generally a page of, of bullet items, major things that I'm working on, the rest of the staff is working on. And we put them together in about a five or six page uh, report. What we'll do is we'll slap a confidential label on it uh, because there are some things in there that are business confidential. We'll send it out to the board for comment and either feel free to ask ele uh, electronic questions or pick up the f pick up the phone and contact any one of us directly. Um, and we'll get you we'll get you an answer. Um, John Morris, you want to give us a little highlights of what you got going? Uh, well, uh, you know, we had a marketing committee meeting uh, not too long ago. We got presented some different options from logos. We looked at some revisions. Uh, Sam, you come out to the uh, to the office. We kind of worked through some of those. Uh, we see. So I think we are uh, have the logo selected at this point, pretty much based mm -hmm. on your input this morning. Um, and we'll be moving forward with that to start to get uh, business cards and letterheads and stuff to really start to brand the, the, the airport itself. Um, we did have some problems with having our new uh, website, uh, draft website, uploaded to our hosting service. I was just informed of that this morning. We were hoping to get that resolved so that Patrick and I can start to actually see that now. Um, it still wouldn't be a live site yet, so we can go back through and add some more information, make sure that we're as comfortable with changes, but there have been some problems with that. Um, so we, we hope to have that resolved as of this morning. Um, you know, we've been active, you know, certainly taking advantage of, uh, you know, a lot of the marketing opportunity, a lot of the press, uh, you know, needless to say, been a lot of coverage of since the since Legion's announcement. Um, you know, we've been active on, on Facebook trying to generate uh, awareness, and that seems like we've actually had a had two real good weeks in that in terms of engagement, um, and people actually starting to come and regularly look at the site, which I think is a good thing. Started to reach out to some other contacts at other airports, uh, just to start to get some ideas of, uh, of what they're doing. Um, needless to say, marketing, any media people that are in the area are uh, knocking on the door pretty pretty re uh, regularly trying to figure out how it is they can, you know, what we can do with them. Uh, so we're trying to get a little bit of a mix together of um, whether it's radio, uh, print, billboard, different things with costs associated with that. And then working with Patrick on hopefully getting a bit of a budget established so we can kind of prioritize what it is we want to do. Um, the Canadian postal strike is kind of impacting a little, at least a couple of the options that we might have previously considered. So, um, but we're, you know, I say now that we have the have the logo thing, I think we'll be able to kind of keep uh, keep moving forward with some of that right now. Interesting thing that happened to me the other day. I was over at Partridge Run playing golf, and there was um, there was 140 people from the Montreal area at that golf course. And there was another 140 people over at the St. Lawrence Golf Course. And people asked me, he said, do you have any flyers? Because I'm trying to PR, whatever, hi, who are you, you know, do you know about this, whatever. And they go, we know nothing about it. And so I was thinking, well, if we had, you know, you know the flyer or something that we hand out or at certain places, whatever, that, you know, that people can, you know, look at it, whatever it want to be. And, and so I thought that would be a great idea. That we no, it it is, and it's something <coughs> now we will certainly be moving. Now. Yeah, it's like that, that whatever. And, and to piggyback on that, Sam, all these, all, and I'm sure you guys know, all these golf courses are having a Canada Day. Like Potsdam, Potsdam Country Club on Monday's Canada, Canadians play. They bring, they specifically target the Canadians to come play, and they give them discounts on green states. So all these golf courses are doing it around here. Um, and, what they're, and it's just smart business sense, when they have a slow day, Monday morning, all the Canadians are there. John, are we doing any any advertising yet or anything up in the Ottawa area? Right? We're not as of as of right yet. I mean, once again, we wanted to wait till we were uh, certainly wait till the Allegiant announcement. I'm hoping uh, I know there's a, a meeting or a telephone conference or what have you with the Legion on Thursday or tomorrow, I believe. I'm hoping to you'll get introduced uh, maybe to a little bit more of the Allegiant uh, folks that are on their marketing team. Still trying to coordinate what it is they might be doing. I mean, I think we want to promote our airport regardless, but I, I want to make sure that we're not, you know, essentially um, doubling down. We have limited dollars that we can put forth, so I want to see, get an idea of what it is they're going to be doing and then figure out a plan that kind of complements that but creates exposure for us. 
I thought that was interesting when, I, when you go on the Allegiant site and you put in Augensburg, it's got Augensburg slash Ottawa, yeah. which, is, yeah. which is great. I'm sure if you if you go Ottawa, then that'll come up too. Yeah. I reviewed the Canadian papers after they announced that the Ottawa citizen picked it up, the Brockville reporter Times picked it up, so they had stories on it. Mm -hmm. And um, the Business Journal in Ottawa did not, one of all people did not, so I sent them emails okay. and the story. Yeah. Cornwall had a nice story as as Will Kingston. So from Kingston to Cornwall and right. Ottawa, so we've got pretty good coverage on that. Yeah. Um, John, I did want to follow up on one thing. You mentioned that the logo is, is done. Is that ready to go to the marketing committee for approval and then to the full board for approval? Yeah. Yes, like I said, that's why I discussed good. that with Sam. Uh, Sam was perfect. So you want to fast track that and get that done? One of the things that we're, we're trying to do is get the money to build the airport, build it, and now what we do next? You know, and obviously it's the hardest part is to run it, okay, because of all the issues and things we want to do. But we're also trying to create with the Florida markets, and we already met with those, I, I, I have whatever, and, and my connections, whatever, is the reverse effect. We think about us going south, okay, in the wintertime, what we're trying to do is, is reverse it. And so the people, uh, in Florida, why don't you come up here and play golf, see the river, see the Thousand Islands, see your castles, you know, both, and, you know, all the things that we have to offer here for our whole area. I mean, we, th we think we're selling Augsburg, we're not. We're selling the whole area. And so the dynamics of all this is to prove that, you know, this is something here, the place that you want to come visit in the summertime. I mean, I have friends and, and relatives live in Florida. And they, their summers is like our winters. You, know, you go outside to the car, get in the car, make sure it's warm, and get get to the warm belly, and, you know, and that's it. And so those people down there, they're doing, they're living an air conditioning lifestyle. And so why not come up here and enjoy the you know, all the things we have to offer? Jim, or, go ahead. Orlando, uh, the Orlando Sanford uh, Airport right now. If you go to their website, they actually have a um, kind of a ticker that's moving across their screen, announcing their most recent flights will be to Augsburg. You know, so they're kind of promoting that right now. And anybody's looking at their website. So I have tried to reach out to their <coughs> marketing person, which must be on vacation, right? Ron is? Yeah. Getting okay. Ron, yeah, it's Ron. Ron. And uh, so I've just, I just got her, you know, out of office reply or whatever, and with an emergency. You know, so okay. I continue to follow back up with her to try to figure out exactly what, you know, what methods we could use to kind of market that down there. Saying. Is, uh, is part of the longer range plan to discuss with, uh, like Sam said, uh, Bolt Castle, maybe Remington, maybe something down your way in Messina, to bring all those groups together and then do a joint uh, add on, on? I mean, it's certainly, uh, uh, it's certainly you know, something I've given some thought to, Sam, in terms of ways that we can do that. You know, I'm not... I mean, not I there think, yet? Al I think ultimately some of that responsibility is going to have to fall upon those entities and organizations to do the same thing we're doing, right. reach out and advertise. I can't organize packages for them, right. but that is some thought that we could maybe we would kind of do some type of a sponsored page and have different places put, you know, take subsections mm -hmm. of that and do some type of a blitz down there. You know, it, it uh, you know, that was part of what the thinking was that I presented down to Alex Bay, the Vision Quest 2020 group, um, was down there, and that's kind of what they were talking about. was how do we get together and pull some pull some money together? Mm -hmm. Who would be in charge of it and things like that? So there's there's issues to work through that I think with people before they just start throwing up a pot of money. Right. Um, but that's what we're trying to do is create awareness that this is an opportunity, and to some extent it is. The you know businesses also need to look at how you know what does this what could opportunities this represent for me and how do I take advantage of it? So that's kind of uh, kind of my message out there is you know we're we're willing to play a role in that, but certainly we can't do everything for everyone. Good. I mean, I, I just think this is going to be, you know, obviously from get-go, the reason why we stuck our neck way out as far as we have <laughs> to do this. I think it's just going to be a boom for us. I mean, and going both ways. I mean, I got my dad's 83 and my mom's 80. They love the fact that they're not going to have to ch change planes, right? <laughs> you have to change planes most of the time to go somewhere. So I don't have to worry. So I, I feel comfortable getting mom and dad on the plane in Augensburg and somebody pick them up in Orlando and some, or someplace like that. So it's, I think it's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Well, we 
all know the commitment we made when we started this. So, there you go. Uh, John, anything else? No, I'm good right now. Okay, Thank you. awesome. Um, Patrick Sherrill is, is probably almost as new as you folks. He started <laughs> about, he's our new airport manager, and we realized that uh, the way our business runs, our business model has changed, that we need to identify specialists at each area where we want to be. And so Patrick has a huge uh, background experience. Uh, maybe you can introduce yourself and tell a little bit about yourself, Patrick. And well, good to meet you guys. First of all, I heard kind of there was a lot of change going on, and I kind of jumped right in on that as well. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to get involved in this because I mean, it's not very often that you have an airport out there that's basically a blank slate and we really can do whatever we want with it. That's a really unique opportunity. I think that I know these guys understand and now you guys jumping on, um, we're going to be working closely in anything you guys can think or anything that you have visions to share with us. I mean, we're here to work together to make this work. Um, you know, a lot of what I've been doing right now is I've got very capable team here that has been moving very well um, ahead and now I'm just trying to basically get the FAA, TSA um, certifications in, the fuel farms up and running, uh, make sure we're having uh, good support for our GA traffic as well. I mean, we're focusing right now on our Legion and our air carriers, um, but I want to make sure we're still offering good service for the, for the tenants that are still here and it's still an aviation community here. Um, with the airport, we're really going to focus on safety, efficiency, um, make sure that we offer the best product that we can to our aviation customers. Um, we've got to look at not just our air carriers, not just our uh, general aviation, but also make sure that we're moving forward in a way that all of our stakeholders are, um, are involved. That includes Hopkinsburg, that includes um, Osmogachi and our surrounding areas and our surrounding companies. Um, because ultimately, at the end of the day, we're not successful unless our stakeholders are successful. So the community has to be successful. Um, the airlines, our tenants have to be successful. And that's what we're here to do. We provide a service. So we look forward to working with everyone in the area, the, um, the board, and our, our team. So please look out, reach out to us. Um, I don't have a card yet, so I can't <laughs> give it to you. But as soon as I have a card, these guys do have my contact information. So please reach out if there's anything you want to talk about, um, any ideas you guys have. We're very open, and we look forward to working with all of you. So. Okay. Could, could you, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Could you just um, give these guys a little bit of background on where you came from, what airport you came from, that type of thing? Sure. Um, so I originally, I, I was a pilot. I got my pilot's license when I was 16 years old, and I uh, started kind of working around. I grew up in Burlington, Vermont. I went to college down at Embry-Riddle, uh, started developing airports. We worked on actually a couple spots over in the Ottawa area, Park City, um, designing smaller airports that were the old Triangle World War II air bases that basically got thrown away when they weren't needed anymore. So we worked on a couple projects uh, developing those sites into industrial parks and uh, actually flying communities where you, you, know, you can go in and have your condo and your plane can taxi in this side of your garage and your car can taxi in this side. Um, just ideas, thinking outside of the box, that's where I really got into the whole airport design world. Uh, I left Florida, went back up to Vermont to get back closer to family. was lucky enough to get hired as a uh, supervisor for JetBlue Airways. Worked a lot going around the country, starting uh, kind of the startup craze that JetBlue had back in 2003, 2004, up till 2006. I left JetBlue Airways in 2006 and went to actually work for the airport, Burlington International Airport, as an operations specialist, where I basically was in charge of the Part 139 certification, uh, wildlife management, um, and, and everything that involves with the operation of the airport. Uh, I also worked uh, very much, we didn't have a huge staff there, so we kind of did what we could to help other areas out. So I worked very closely with the engineering department, doing a lot of the master plans, the CIP planning, uh, the federal grants, the AIP process, um, worked on a bunch of different construction projects that ranged from anywhere from building uh, parking garages, extending runways, we're currently uh, building two new taxiways and we extended um, uh, two of the taxiways so we had full parallels. Uh, we worked on glycol infiltration systems which were all these things in the back of my head I never thought would come up again but <laughs> now that we're doing these projects all these these things are coming back up, so um, all those those years there really really helped out in the engineering world. Um, 
so yeah, there's kind of a background with uh, working with, with the airport, with the TSA, with the FAA, and we also work a lot with the military out there. So kind of have my very little hands in a lot of different areas of, of running an airport. So we look forward to, to now being here. Um, and, and, and it's exciting because I'm very much a family person. I've loved aviation my whole life. And to come up here and see these smaller airports in Vermont, you had an opportunity to get into the state airports, but the state airports were very, um, how do I say, there was not a lot of money there, there's not a lot of ambition to, to grow, and it was a very hard political environment, and the result of that is a lot of Vermont's uh, state airports have had a really, really tough time and a really big struggle. Um, this is a great opportunity because I see, I see the potential in not only the commercial side, but the family side, the local, uh, the local general aviation side. So it's really excited for me to be able to get involved in, in both of this and, and start building this from the ground up. And, and all the things that he said, because of the fact that I'm mean, just uh, bring, kind of bringing you guys up to speed at 160 miles an hour, um, because um, this project is a project, they told us what it take 10 years. Yeah, we've taken a 10 year project and done it in a little over two years. A little over two years. So the experience that Patrick brings in different, though, all those different things that he's saying, you know, the acronyms and saying, those are the things that we have needed to bring up to speed to be able to get us up and, um, and going. So he has you know, knowledge, uh, previous background and knowledge in those things that we, we just, there's no way we could do it with all the other things that we have going on and the uh, limited staff that we have. So welcome and thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Glad to meet you. Thank you. Um, I just look, unless you, you get a question for him. I will. But go okay. Ahead. I just wanted to mention that I wasn't here for nearly four weeks in June, and uh, Wade and uh, Karen were able to keep the wheels on the accounting bus. And Karen's not here today, as she had long-term plans for vacation this week, but uh, I did want to mention that because it was very, very important. You know, when I got back, there wasn't uh, 16 accounting crises, or there wasn't really any, and, uh, uh, you know, as it, it boring as accounting may seem, uh, we have a lot of responsibilities every day, and uh, I did want to mention that, uh, that 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 was done, and uh, and we were even able to get the uh, parish reporting done on time. Uh, I got back in the last week, and we were able to work together and get that all done by June 30th. So uh, I think a lot of accolades go. Will they get a copy of the audit report? Yes, we haven't got it yet. But yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. It's simply been reading. Oh, okay. They're in boxes, so they're not open. Okay. Got them in there, and we have electronic like, copy boxes. Patrick, let's figure Is there any, uh, uh, is the Legion going to uh, have a dry run here? They're going to bring a plane in and have us refuel it? No. Anything like that? No, the, uh, on the first day of service, they'll bring it in. It'll be on the ground for about four hours. But one of the things that we're going to do prior to that um, in the month of September is we will have a mock-up where we will be asking for uh, basically 400 volunteers from the community to come in and stress our ever <coughs> simulating 177 people on the ramp to 177 people going through the, the terminal. So that way we can stress security. We can stress the terminal and find out just exactly where the problems are so that way we don't have them on October 5th. Now, Legion has the plane in here on October 5th for four hours for all the grand opening activities and, and that type of stuff. But prior to that, no, they have no plans of uh, bringing in the plane. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that because I looked at future scheduling and the way a Legionnaire plans it is 45 minute turnaround which means in, out, gone. And a couple of, couple of flights, and they, they vary their schedule, and, and lead into the Cape Air situation. So the Cape Air flights are never going to be at the same time, so there's some, there's some uh, logistical type of things that we we'll have to have. And, and, you know, we think about, you know, it's funny you start thinking about it, and say, here comes one, ah, here comes a plane in, right? And that plane is going to leave. And then you think of a major airport, and you see them way out in the distance. They're all lined up coming in, coming in. And you start to think about the logistical things that the control tower that's done and all those things, the movement of people have to be done. And we're just going to deal with one flight, one flight. And, you know, it sounds like 
And that's a very important one flight because we can't do any more than be good at that before we can ask ourselves to do more than that. And that's what we kind of backed up a little bit of, you know, who do we want to come in next or wherever, wherever it is we want to be. And so that's what, that's what we're, you know, we're gearing up for. How well, how well we do what we do now. You know, so. so go ahead. That, that, to piggyback on what you're saying, now we're going to be responsible for loading and unloading the plane? No, there's a legion that's going to have their uh, ground ops people there. They call them GSE. Okay, so we um, We will be there to supplement and augment, but okay. they're responsible. They're responsible. I know so one time we talked that there was eight or nine wheelchairs. We had to have people out there. We're and still going to have that still responsibility. Have that responsibility. Yeah. I think okay. new board members are supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't read the fine line. Did you like that in a motion? <laughs> I'll make a motion for that. <laughs> Should have turned that oath of office. <laughs> 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 oh, so how do we get 400 volunteers? Free beer? Or? <laughs> well, we can't have beer because it's authority <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, we'll probably end up When are you going to do that? Some type of September? September sometime, yes. Look to the school. Some kids, some yeah, you know, the high school kids are... Yeah. Good transfer to where the airport and everything too. Yes. Yeah. Well, we got the idea from our engineer that you know, in the conference we're at, he said, you know, how, how do you do this? If you come in cold, you know, you say, you know, here comes the fuel guy, here comes the baggage guy, right, yeah. and all these things. Are, whoops, sorry. All these things are moving. All these things are moving. He said the best way to do it is go put line your line your plane out on the, out on the tarmac. Okay. Put the chairs exactly where they are. Where they're supposed to be in the aisles, and so all the people are in the holding area, right? People are sitting in the seats of the plane, okay? Cook, here we go, all right? So now the people are going to move to the baggage area, and the other people are okay, going to call them out, whatever, and send them out the whole way through. And you got, you know, it's like a class time, Sam, as a teacher, 45 minute class, here we go, 45 minutes, all has to be done, all has to be done, you know? And, and so that's the practice, that's the, that's the theme of the practice. You know, so, and we know what, when we really designed, you know, all this, whatever, we put extra money into the terminal building because we thought about, you know, how do we make this experience the best as possible? And that is the baggage part. People get off the plane, you know, you look out there, and what the, the part of the terminal building is there, that's just for the baggage part. And, and it was like people want to get their luggage, they want to get on the road, they want to go. They want to go. In some places you go, you wait, you wait for the bag, and people get frustrated. You know, where's my bag? Where's my bag? Where do I want to be? And so that was a major part of the decision making here to you know make the experience as positive as possible. Our holding area is, is probably going to be a little a little tight, a little tight, but in the length of time, they'll be on the plane and away they go. So it'll be it'll be. Well, thank you, Patrick. Uh, welcome aboard again. Um, Along here, any other questions for our staff? Go ahead. Well, regarding the airport, yeah. I don't want to put Don on the, the spot because, but and if you don't recall or not, is the county still making a contribution to the Chamber of Commerce? You know, I can yeah. honestly say I have no idea. Yeah, I, don't think I can you're. find it out. Yeah, no, that's what I and the reason why I'm saying is I, I think it's important what we're doing um, to partner whatever, however, we can with the county. I mean, I mean, I'm sure we did your support on this that it's it's. It's something that, that our whole county needs to know that's available to them and, and let them know that they have access to this. And in any way that we can get the word out, um, uh, if, if the county, I mean, if, if the county is making a contribution to the Chamber of Commerce, it's the taxpayer's money. So they should get that information maybe through them too. So but, and I know John's been reaching out to them already. Yeah, yeah, so. and feel free to use me in any way as a go between. Thank happy you. to do that. I have an interest in both areas. Yeah. I mean, it may, and I don't know if you've done it, even if something is saying, I, I think it's our, our responsibility too to make a presentation even to your board, you know, so 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 that your your board members are aware of what we're doing. Uh, we want to partner more and more, uh, you know, with the county and what we're doing so everybody knows it's benefiting everybody. Absolutely. We get lots of presentations. I know you Fred and Sam can attest to that. <laughs> I know. Okay. Thank you. They also control the I love New York money, so they they are the best ones to promote the flights back. And you we were talking about Sam with the kind of contractions here, right? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Don. Sure. Uh, any other finished business? 
There is not. Okay. Um, next is the schedule of uh, upcoming uh, board meetings. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will not be here the first week of August. I mean, I'll board of credit union board of directors meeting all week. Obviously, August 3rd is a bad day for me also. Um, 10th? 10th, okay. August 10th? How's that work for you? Uh, we're here. <laughs> we're here. That doesn't, that doesn't <laughs> even more time for your reports anyways. Okay, August 10th. Let's talk about time. Sam, I won't make the 10th. I'll be in court. Okay. You may not be there long. I'll come back for you. <coughs> Lynn and Sam, we, we've been flexible. As you can see, with the schedule or whatever, we're, our time frame, whatever, we have to announce or whatever. So, I mean, we kind of vary the time. So, you know, to, you know, every, the people are working people, whatever. We try to, you know, work with you or all of us to see what's what's best for everybody. Uh, 8.30 or would you like an afternoon meeting? I think first thing in the morning or later in the afternoon. Okay, I don't so know 8.30 how late works. Okay. Uh, yeah. 8.30 in the morning, all right? 8.30 works. All right, for the next meeting, let's schedule for 8.30. On the 10th. On the 10th. Okay. I'm assuming the 7th is the 11th. Oh. That's the after Labor Day. I believe so. Yeah, that's good. Prime time of your day for Patrick, whatever it would be, and you're sitting in a board meeting and you say, all right, well, I mean, where should I be at, at this point in time? Um, you know, this is, I, I know it's extra time and it will go late in the day for you. Um, I'm new here, I don't want to say this. Is, <laughs> I mean, good answer. This is the first good one that I've had here. Good right answer. Right now, I can make it political work. structure. <laughs> I can make it very, very, very good. <laughs> very, very good. Very, very good. Actually, you don't want to say that. You weren't here for those 12 o'clock. Yeah, right. Time to go home 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. I guess for, for new board yeah, members, too, one of our, generally we have a lot of business to conduct, particularly when the committees are more active, uh, as they will be. Uh, more things will be coming before the board. We'll generally have presentations that you saw a very short one today. Generally, we'll have um, an engineer in here doing an update on Project X, Y, or Z. Um, it seems like our best board meetings are probably three hours long, and at longest, they're probably about four to five. Yeah. Uh, we'll we had an eight-hour plan. We've had some problems. problems. <laughs> That's generally how they how they fall. So. When we have those presentations, will those uh, people be able to get here later? Um, well, you know, with enough notice, yes, okay. that's not a problem. Okay. Uh, where it comes into play is if we start, you know, if we have a meeting scheduled for today and then we bounce it to later in the week or then next right. week, and that causes problems, but with notice, they're fine. So you're saying August is tough for you? No, I, I, to me is. Uh, no, I mean we can. Move. I can do whatever I need to do. I can do whatever I want to do. I was just trying to think of, and it's it's interesting how you think about yourself. Some people are fresh in the morning. Let's go, you know, you know, and at three o'clock in the afternoon, you've had a busy day. Other things are on your plate that you know. Whenever you come in here, and you got to sit and talk and listen for three, four hours. And it's it's uh, one restraints to it. I think mornings are fine. Okay, we'll right. stay with 8 to rest. Sounds good. All right. Uh, and, and wait. And go ahead, Mr. Chairman, and just to piggyback on it, obviously we've, we've done that in the past. I mean, <coughs> obviously if there's something pressing that a staff member has that comes up that takes precedent, I mean, I'll, yeah. you know, I mean, if, if Patrick, if there's... If you coordinate, and the same as John has done in the past, if you guys let Wade know that, hey, we just can't work around this, yeah. then don't worry about that. 
for yeah. sure. With emergency meetings as right. needed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> for fuel pumps. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's, it's a perfect example of Steve, right? Steve wants to be down with the... Yes, uh, there is one key staff member who was absent uh, today, uh, and that's because he's down unloading the ship. That's uh, Steve Lawrence. He's their director of operations here. Actually, with a full board now, it would be easier to have meetings. Because yeah. you know, we, we were struggling with four yeah. members. <laughs> you couldn't meet time. Let's talk. Okay, let's get into our business items. Um, we okay. want to take us forward? Certainly. Uh, let's go right into agenda item, item A1. This is a ratification of an NBT financial transaction. Um, this is, let me give the short history on this. In large figures, I can see it a little better on the screen. <coughs> so we have a Market New York grant. It's a reimbursable, uh, reimbursable grant through New York State, Empire State Development. As part of that grant, um, I'm sorry, that grant for the benefit of our new board members funds uh, marketing activities from Cape Vincent all the way to Glens Falls. There's about seven or eight partner agencies in there. Our role is we are the pockets and we are the administration of it. And as such, we get compensated. Uh, big picture, I think we make $100,000 off of it. So it's a good deal for us. It's a good deal for the partner agencies. It helps make it helps make us uh, relevant regionally, and increases tourism, which is part of our uh, part of our goal. So as part of this grant, this grant is the authority fronts a million dollars, and basically uh, we pay the bills of the other organizations. We process it. We submit to reimbursement for the state. State is not always speedy, as you know. So as a result, we obtained a $1 million line of credit with NBT Bank for as backup to the Market New York program. Now the Market New York program with NBT, because we had that line of credit, put a UCC filing on us, which is a lien for all intents and purposes. Fast forward in time a little bit. Now we're doing the airport expansion project. We need a $5 million line with uh, key bank capital uh, markets to keep the main project going, and a $5.5 .5 million for the terminal, which is 100% on OBPA's time. Uh, we lacked quorum, so for a period of, through the end of December through March, we couldn't bring those lines of credit on online because we did not have quorum to approve the transaction until March. So in March, the transaction is approved with KeyBank. Everything rolls forward. Um, routine check a couple of months later, KeyBank is looking at liens on the authority, UCC liens. Well, there's an NBT UCC on the authority, which shut us down. It shut down the KeyBank uh, line, lines of credit, both of them. So to keep the bulldozers moving, uh, we had to negotiate a deal, or I negotiated a deal with NBT which got the NBT bank to lift the UCC lien, which opened up those lines of credit so that way we could continue with the project. There's a couple of catches, as there are with any uh, financial transaction. I notified the board at the time of that. Um, we immediately needed to pay $133,000 in cash to get the UCC lifted. We had to obligate $450,000 of our upcoming $480,000 plus or minus reimbursement from Empire State Development, and we can no longer do draws on that account. Now that is important because that additional draws on the account means that there's about $300,000 of future bills coming through that we no longer have a line of credit back in. But that's what we had to do to get everything back on track and get the key bank line open. I uh, pulled the board at the time, of, uh, advised the board of the time of the transaction, uh, received both uh, email and uh, uh, verbal response that uh, it was approved and that we would be up for uh, ratification at the next board meeting, and here we are. So with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. I'll use my banking experience and stuff we had to do. I mean, just I mean, it's, uh, because MBT putting the UCC lien on us. 
now KeyBank said, hey, you got your line of credit, that five million of that correct is going to be reimbursable. Yes. The other five and a half million were on that dime for the terminal. That's our money, but the other five million is going to be reimbursable. But they said, hey, we're, we can't, we're not going to give you this money. After we negotiated unbelievable terms with them, over a million dollars that we're getting, we're basically the conduit of it, that we're getting those monies. We're up fronting the monies, giving it to these different organizations and get reimbursed from the state. They put a UCC. So we said, hey, we just can't stop the bulldozers from going. So basically the long and short of it. MBT thinking like this said, hey, we're gonna we're gonna slap that lien on it. So we had no other recourse. This opens up our line of credit with key. Uh, the line of credit has been open since uh uh, middle of last month. Yeah. This is one of those things that comes up uh, in between board meetings that requires either a special board meeting or a ratification. Right. It also points to the fact that <coughs> when we negotiate with a bank like NBT, we get right up front and say we don't want a lien file. Right. 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 Frank? You get right. up front and say, because it was an afterthought, I don't think it was mentioned when we were negotiating. No, it, wasn't credit. it wasn't. And you can, that you can do it without signature of the debtor now, you just file it. I mean, I could file one against anybody in the room here. Right. So I think it's something that, you know, Wade now obviously learned a banking lesson he didn't need to learn. Right. And basically go in and say, if we want a line of credit, but we don't want you filing any liens because you screw up everything else we're trying to do. We're not the only organization we do business with. And we're not an organization that can go bankrupt. We have to keep going. So they're not out any money. It's just is, is that common banking practice? Maybe the average exactly. Yes. To uh, part it's a common you? practice, but you know, with an organization, and they knew what you were doing with the airport, yeah. and you knew you were getting reimbursed by the state. The only question was timing with the state getting your money back and filling out those silly reports, make sure you don't make mistakes and delay it. I mean, if they weren't at risk at all. They didn't really need to file it. Now, Key Bank, on the other hand, right. I would have filed it because I got ten million dollars right. in the pot. <laughs> hey, but I'd have told you up front I was going to do that. And but I if you needed more money, you could go back to Key Bank and you can renegotiate. Right. I guess the other thing is, why is this here? This is something that could could have been taken care of behind the scenes, but it's much larger than the typical transactions I usually deal with. So that's why I want to bring it forward. Fully disclose it and put it out there. That was the original intent. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion uh, to approve this uh, ratification of the MBT financial tra transaction. I'll second. Please. You really comment that Don, Don, Don I don't know if it's appropriate for me to ask a question or not, but if, just looking at the report, I'm a little confused. In the second paragraph, uh, it says, as a result, the key bank placed the UCC lead. Mm -hmm. Is that what happened? No, nope, no. Nope. <laughs> Good catch, catch Don. Thank you. No, it should be MVT. Okay, I just wondered because I just listened to the conversation yeah. and Good that didn't see what you were saying. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you know, I, I sit here and I'm, and, and I guess one part of me is I'm thankful that they took the lead away, but then I'm sour on the other side. I'm going, I think. The, they could have said a little vision and foresight further down the road to say, why am I why am I asking for one hundred thirty three thousand dollars? I mean, so customarily, I, I don't know. I mean, so that's a right, you know. And, and it's like okay, and we had to do business, and we had to move forward, and that's just one of those choices you make along the way that uh, leaves a sour taste in my mouth, whatever. So, but it is what it is. Um, any other comments? Could I call the roll, please? Mr. Lawler? Yes. Mr. Reagan? Yes. Ms. Houghton? Yes. Mr. Burns? Yes. Mr. Lamont? Yes. <laughs> Is there a way to make that yes sound? <laughs> Black and white, a sound of a bad yes? It is a. It's always nice to be able to say no. Yeah. <laughs> Um, agenda item B1 is a ratification of an easement on National Grid. You recall uh, back on the October 7, 2015 uh, Board of Directors meeting, I requested authorization to, a blanket authorization to enter into these utility agreements 
uh, for easements and then uh, made a commitment that I would follow around with uh, a final um, ratification to be able to cover all the bases here. This is for the Route 68 side of the project. We had to have an easement prepared which um, in accordance with the project gives the easement to National Grid for the new area out on Route 68. Uh, that's what this does in a nutshell. On June 14th, we received and executed the easement, uh, and now we're looking for the corresponding ratification of same. I'll move that. A second. Any question, comments? I just have one question. I'm looking at the easement again, this is probably just the lawyer in me coming out, but do you want your resolution to say, Grid when the easement is with itself, Niagara and Verizon, or do you want to be more specific? Does it matter? Um, the easement documents. I'm looking at the easement behind it. Maybe it's not the same one. As I believe DBA National Grid, does it not? Yeah, or is that one of the old? Uh, this one just says Niagara, Niagara Mohawk. Mohawk. Although I think it has Grid's address, but. Mm -hmm. Easy enough, again, easy enough to fix. Just a quibble. That's important. <coughs> Another excellent catch. Thank you. So where it says National Grid, you're saying we should have the Mohawk? Is that what I'm thinking? If you do, I was just looking at the easement, you know, that came along with the packet, and I was just saying if you wanted to be that specific, yeah, your easement says it's with Niagara, Mohawk, and Verizon, and your resolution just mentioned okay. the parent company grid. I want to check and see which name they really go by with regard to their easements. But <laughs> yes, sure we I believe the correspondence we did with them back and forth is with National Grid. National Grid. Because they throw in National and I want the Power Corporation out on these things. So don't ask me why. Yeah. Yeah. We're 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 we have them both for the uh, internal. No, looking at it. For Wade, we used to walk down there and, and retype it, do, do, you know, reconfigure it. Now he goes down there and just thousands of dollars to save it. Yeah. Yeah.